Well, hello. God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I am celebrating Jesus Pride Month. And my friends, I'm having a ball. God bless you. <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? Praise the Lord. Here we are. Uh, the day is, uh, what, the 13th? We're, we're into the month of June, well into the month of June, celebrating this month, declaring that just as he made all of the months of the year, he made this month also. And we are saying to the government, we are saying to the culture, we are saying to all who are participating in the wicked pride celebration that we do not go along with you that we believe that the rainbow in all of its colors that God made is sacred. The Lord said in Genesis chapter 9, verse 13, I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud, when I bring a storm over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. Uh, look at this. God says, I'm going to remember it. And, uh, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Look at God and the bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. God did it. And my friends, we ought not allow the enemy to take the sign of God's covenant and to calls it to mean something else. Now, uh, I've been watching the news, Brother Gary, and all ever since June has started, they have reminded us over and over and over that we are now in the hurricane season. And they're showing us uh, things on the news saying that the waters are already uh, the, the temperature that they normally would be in August and the, the waters are hot and this is going to be an active season and it may very well be. But if it is, don't we need the rainbow? Don't we need to see a sign? Don't we need grace and mercy that says that the Lord will take care of us and regardless to how ferocious the storms may be, Thank God that there is a God who controls the storms, he controls the wind, he controls the rain, and in the midst of these storms, when the cloud is brought upon the, uh, 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 the storm is brought upon the people and upon the earth, thank God that God puts the rainbow up there that tells us that it won't keep raining, that it will stop, that there will be another day. And for you, my friends, who are going through, it's storming in your life. Well, this is a sign. God knows how to give you a sign that that storm won't last forever. Sometimes the key to getting over a thing is just to simply outlast it. Just stand your ground. Hold on to the cross. Hold on to the scriptures. Believe God through the storm and the rain, through the pain and all that you have to contend with. And you know what will happen? My Lord, the sun will shine again. Weeping may endure for a night, the Bible says, but joy cometh in the morning. Brother Gary, I hear my mother's voice as I talk about this. One of her favorite songs was, Hello, Sunshine. It's mighty good to see your bright sunshine. Hello, sunshine. It's been dark 
for such a long time. God knows how to bring the sun out. God knows how to touch you. Amen. And a sign that that it will that the sun will shine again is the rainbow sign. Now, we've been getting requests here at the church and we have been giving out the information. People want to know where, how can we get the seven color rainbow? I've even heard from people who said they've gone on the uh, Amazon and different places trying to find the seven colors and can't find them. They can find the six. They can find some of these other things, but the seven color, I think there's something going on with that. I think that's the devil, but call here, call the upper room. The information is on the screen. We'll tell you how to get the seven colors and display them, display them. I want you to know I was in uh, the nation's capital last weekend. I'm up there and, uh, and, uh, in Maryland in the DC area. And I stood before that congregation and I showed them this flag and uh, I want you to know that the people stood and gave me a rounding uh, uh, applause. The people said, praise God. They said, preacher, stand on the wall. I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, just on last night. I, I had the flag with me. And when I took it out and showed it and displayed it, I even wrapped it around me, just as I did in D.C., and did a little turn. The people began to applaud. It's amazing. I'm meeting people who are walking up to me after service and telling me I wore this, I wore this color, and I wore that color to show solidarity with the movement. And if you notice, someone called me the other day. They said if you go to some of these big box stores, I won't name the stores, but some of the stores that heretofore have been all in on Pride Month and displaying all of their LGBTQ plus. I'm, hey, we're running out of alphabet. All of that paraphernalia, many of those stores have stopped that. They've dropped that or they moved it to the back of the store because you, my friends, have decided to let your dollars do the talking to spend your money in the same direction that you pray in. See, because there's no need in praying about a thing and then walking in the store and, and, and patronizing them. Oh, no, I want to say to the Christian consumer, you have enormous power. You have power where, listen, listen, people are in business to make money. I don't care what they, <laughs> how woke they claim to be. Here's what they're woke to, that if you don't have customers, you're not going to stay in business. You let your dollars and where you patronize place, places, where you go, let that uh, speak for you. And I guarantee you, it will help turn the tide along with prayer, along with talking with people, along with explaining what we're doing and why. And I find that when people hear our why and they see the scriptures that people agree uh, with us, uh, those who believe the Bible. Now, those who don't believe the Bible and those who don't love Jesus and those who have just uh, decided that they're going to live a godless life. Well, we're going to pray for you and we understand why you don't agree with us, but we're going to pray that the Lord open your eyes because you, sir, you, ma'am, are in darkness and you need to be saved. The good news is Jesus loves you. And he will save you and set you free. And that's why we're doing this. We're not motivated by hate. We're motivated by love. Anytime you see someone practicing community destructive behavior or practicing self-destructive behavior, isn't it wise? Isn't it loving? Isn't it the kind thing to do to warn people about their wicked ways, their self-destructive, community-destructive ways, and to try and to do something about it by telling them in a strong, sometimes passionate, but always motivate, motivated by love, loving way, devoid of profanity. That's not going to help our cause. Not getting up in anybody's face, sticking your hands in their face and all that kind of stuff. That's what the world does. That's what the Hamas crowd does. That's what the wicked it does. That's what that's what the, the jihadists do. Uh, they're the ones who kill people for not believing. 
Christians die based on what we believe. We're willing to die for our faith. We don't kill people for not believing. We don't, we don't uh, disturb people uh, at lunch. Uh, they're, they're trying to have lunch. They're at a restaurant. They're, they're trying to have peace. They're on the subways. Just as I saw the other day, uh, this morning on the news, people getting on the subway uh, asking uh, if you're a Zionist, raise your hand. They're trying to torment the Jewish people, and these people are trying to intimidate people. Well, I'm going to tell you something, my friends. I'm going to show you the scriptures tonight where we're not to be intimidated, where we're not to back down, we're not to be terrified, but we're to stand our ground and stand on the word of God because we have the advantage. The God of the Bible is on our side. I want to remind you, you're not alone. The Lord is with you. Now, I got to cut this because I'm excited about tonight. I don't want to uh, preach uh, uh, tonight's message uh, um, right now, but I do want to mention uh, Juneteenth is coming up. I think it's June 19th, a wonderful celebration that takes place this month. All right. I'm, I'm, I, look, we're going to celebrate Juneteenth that when the news got to Texas, when the news got to Gaveston, when the news finally arrived and uh, the slaves learned that slavery was over. I think that that is a worthy celebration. Uh, I think that regardless of your color, you uh, could, could easily celebrate that because it was the work of white people and black people that brought slavery to its conclusion in this great land of ours. Uh, but uh, I guess um, <clears throat> uh, the president and the White House and that crowd couldn't wait till the 19th. They had the June uh, 10th celebrations on the White House lawn uh, a, a couple of days ago. And um, I'm mentioning this because uh, I just think, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm doing, you know, here's wooding again. But, you know, Kurt Franklin was singing the song, um, uh, I um, don't want to love anybody but you. And I'm assuming that the lyrics, since he is a gospel artist, was uh, about Jesus Christ. Now, it's amazing how, and Brother Gary, you can show it. Now, there is uh, Billy Porter, a man standing there, dressed like a woman, dancing to the gospel music. And I think on, uh, on one occasion, uh, our beloved vice president, was up on the stage moving and grooving. I mean, it wasn't church dancing, uh, dancing like they're at a club and everybody's doing the thing. I don't want to love anybody but you, you know, except the president. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about him uh, in this election season, but look at him. Did he know where he was? But anyway, my point I'm making is this. Um, I think that uh, uh, gospel artists um, should uh, perform, do what they do, sing for the Lord in any venue or vignette that is open to them. But I do think that if you are an artist, and the Lord opens the door for you to sing in front of a crowd of unsaved people. They, 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 they're, they're, they're smoking, they're drinking. The man is there with his neighbor's wife. You know, everybody's a little high on something. Mm -hmm. You know how people go to these uh, uh uh, concerts. None of us have been saved all of our lives. They got a little wine, got the beer. Praise the Lord. The profanity is everywhere. The marijuana, the stench of it is, is all in the air. Everybody's getting high, whether you're using it or not. Get, get, getting your contact and all of that. 
You're out there in that venue, you're in that uh, at, at the concert, you're there to uh, dance and have a good time. So the gospel artist, the one who represents Jesus, steps out. Now I just don't think, Gary. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I don't think that the gospel artist ought to outdo the world. You're the gospel artist, but you can dance, you can groove, you can do all of the latest worldly dance moves better than they can. I mean, if you are a gospel artist, <laughs> say for instance, you came to the Lord 15 years ago. So when you got saved 15 years ago, they were doing some kind of groove. And you came out and you were doing at least what you did 15 or 20 years ago. Because since you got saved, you hadn't kept up with the latest dance craze because you're born again. You're not in the world anymore. You're not trying to be like the world. You're trying, you're representing Jesus. You're in the church. Now, Brother Gary, I find it odd that the man who has been saved for and, and, and singing for Jesus for 30 years or more can do the latest uh, dance moves better than the world can. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a scripture I read last night where the Bible, Paul said to the saints at Corinth, what a slap in the face. Paul said in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, uh, it is reported commonly that there is a fornication among you, such fornication as not so much as named among the Gentiles. Paul said, you Corinthians who are born again, you are out porneering, pornea is the, the Greek word for fornication here, which is any illicit sexual behavior, including incest, homosexuality, lesbianism, adultery, premarital sex, bestiality. All of these things are covered under the Greek word pornea. And uh, this is the same word that Jesus used when he said, if any man will put away his wife, saving for the cause of pornea and marry another, he committeth adultery. So that goes to show when people say that Jesus didn't say anything against homosexuality. Yes, he did. Just as he spoke out against all other sexual sins and the people who, uh, who were there listening to him, they understood what pornea means and what it meant. So here is Paul telling the saints at uh, Corinth, you're sending up a storm I mean, Paul is saying the world is not sinning as bad as you are. Well, now we got gospel artists who can do the latest moves. I mean, the one that they just invented five minutes ago. Better or as good as their worldly counterparts. Now, how can that be if you're, try if you're trying to be sanctified? And so you're singing, you got a man, Billy Porter, dancing out there uh, with a dress on, with a dress on, a man in a dress, a self-professed celebrated homosexual, uh, kissing the president's hand while the vice president, you know, she's laughing. And her husband is standing there and uh, he's flanked by George Floyd's brother, and all of this is in the name of celebration. The country is celebrating 100 years of freedom and 100 and uh, uh, 100 years of freedom. 100 years too soon. And uh, let's see. Uh, this is the, I'm reading a quote from James Baldwin in a letter, 1963. Uh, to his nephew, James Baldwin, wrote of the United States, the country is celebrating 100 years of freedom, 100 years too soon. Baldwin, also notably critical of Israel, found and found much solidarity with the struggle of the Palestinian people. Now, now so um, Porter, I guess he's going to do, uh, uh, he's going to represent James Baldwin. Uh, for much of the concert, Porter danced beside the president and the vice president, swaying to the variety of 
musical acts performed on the White House lawn, and among those acts were gospel acts. What in the world has happened to our church? Amen. Uh, uh, it was Galveston, Texas, where they got the where they learned of the emancipation. I want to make sure I get that right. So we are seeing literal wickedness take place and fools are being made of people. So I'm going to say to the gospel artists, back to the point I was making, so you thought I forgot, didn't you? I want to say that it, when the door is open for you to go on these venues and sing the gospel, how about singing a song that brings conviction? How about singing a song about them accepting Christ's love? How about singing a song, sing a song that deals with uh, going to hell if you don't get right? <laughs> you know, just put a, put a groove to it. You know, get down. Hey, hey, but you're going to hell if you don't get right, right. <laughs> Gary, I don't know about all that, but let me tell you something. If the Lord opens a door for you, then you ought to represent Christ and you ought to love the audience enough. Love them enough to try and deposit something in their heart that will germinate and grow and cause them to accept Jesus Christ. Love them beyond the price of the ticket. Love them beyond your being on the stage. Love them beyond you, you being so honored to be there. View it, view it as an opportunity to win a soul. View it as an opportunity to share the love of Jesus. Do your thing. Sing your songs. Be the best that you can be. But you know how you do. You know how we do between songs. We preach a little bit. We ad live. We do some things. We throw some things in there. How about asking them, telling them, you know, you need Jesus. You want God's blessings. You want God's love. You're saying to the Lord, I'm not going to love anyone but you. Well, love is an action word. And Jesus said, if you love me, Keep my commandments. Throw that in there. Throw that in there. Love is not an empty word. It's not a meaningless word. Love is an action word. Love requires change. Love requires us to come out. Now, I've talked to you longer than I intended to, but I'm going to be here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and I am going to be in place for... Bible study. <laughs> that, hey, that still gives me a chuckle. And I hear from people all over. People walk up to me. Bible study. Yes, Bible study. If there's anything people need to know, is people need to know the Bible. People need to know the Word of God. So I'll see you tonight. Meet me right here. We're going to walk in the Scriptures. And the Lord is going to bless us real good. And oh, by the way, by the way, Gary, if you would put it on the screen, I am so honored. The Nate Mac Macmillan Foundation, and Nate is a tremendous man, formerly NBA great, uh, Nate Mac Macmillan, uh, Macmillan, excuse me. He has a tremendous foundation where Nate, uh, Nate's not just talk. Nate is getting the job done. Nate reaches out to touch young uh, disadvantaged black boys. He reaches out to people who cannot repay him, who can't, who can't give back to him in a tangible way, but he's concerned about these young men who all, all too often fall through the cracks. And Nate has found a way to acknowledge uh, people in the community 
who are assisting in this work. Nate has teamed up uh, with uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the new additions to his team is Sister Wanda Thomas, missionary Wanda Thomas. She's a member of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and they're doing a tremendous job. Uh, Hall of Famer David Thompson is a part of it. The new York Giants great, and my classmate when I was in uh, high school, uh, the great uh, Perry Williams uh, will be there, and they're going to be honoring some uh, some people in the community who are doing uh, the work of the Lord. Dr. Thomas uh, Han- Hanley II, uh, Orion Robinson. Dr. Hanley uh, is uh, uh, Central Wake High School. He's a principal. And uh, 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 Mr. Robinson, Durham Nativity School for Boys, he's the dean of the students. And Mr. Tobias McLean of the Harris Barber College, he's the executive director. And my friends, among these who are being honored also is yours truly, pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And I have have been privileged with the opportunity to uh, speak a word, if you will, to deliver a message to those fine young men that we're reaching out to. This is going to take place tomorrow night uh, at the Agnes Barn uh, on Glenwood Avenue in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I'm so excited about it. I'm honored to be a part. I'm honored that this this work is taking place. It's a wonderful work. And uh, I want you to look up the Nate McMillan Foundation. It's worth your donating to. If you care and you're looking for a way to be a blessing to some young men who need it, to be a blessing, to bless someone who may never be able to bless you back in a tangible way, but you may contribute to them becoming winners in society, good citizens, Christians, fine young men. Amen. That investment may keep them from climbing in your window one night, stealing your, uh, stealing your wares. Amen. Uh, uh, we're, we're winning young men. So tomorrow night that's going to take place. Uh, and, uh, I'm excited about it. Well, I'm out of time. So join me tonight right here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ. I'm going to do it again for Bible study. <laughs> now go and enjoy the rest of your Jesus Pride Day. Let me grab my flag again. Gary, let's go and fade off, but just let me. Woo! Praise the Lord. Jesus. It's upside, upside. it's upside down now. Praise God. Well, let me get it right side up. Y'all, you get it. <laughs>